Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Time to Shine, the podcast. I'm Justin. And I'm Karina. And today we're going to be discussing something very interesting. Basically, the, the idea that we're going to be sharing with you guys today is that as long as God is still influencing this world, every single person has the ability to have good thoughts and good intentions. Now, the question, Karina, that we're going to talk about is, are those good intentions really good enough? Okay. So, so let's get to it. Yeah. All right. So here's how we're going to start it all off. Uh, before we get into the ability or the thought process of us having good thoughts or good intentions, there's something that kind of leads us in that, that direction. And I would say this, this thought process of us uh, developing, you know, good ideas or good intentions or whatever it might be, I think a lot of it comes down to peer pressure or pressure in general. There's different forms of pressure that I see in life or I've seen in life as I've grown up. So we've ha I've had peer pressure, which is kind of like when you're younger, it's, you know, your friends are influencing you and or even cousins or, you know, classmates, whatever it might be, like people that are in close proximity to you, they tend to have an impact on you or they influence you. And for the most part, when you're good, there's pressure. I mean, so, sorry, for the most part, when you're young, there's pressure for you to have improvements in your life, for you to, to steadily grow, to become better and better. All right, so that's one form of peer pressure. The other form of pressure I've noticed growing up would be parental pressure. This this thought of, um, especially as being like Christian, you have parents that uh, not so much enforce or push these ideas or thoughts on you, but there's this this sense of pressure from the parents to become to live up to a certain standard, to be a certain way, to act a certain way, not to like, um, how would I say it, kind of disgrace the family name or disgrace Christianity as a whole in general. So, so there's that parental pressure of doing the right thing or acting the right way or being the right person. Like, for example, we could go to, when, when I was younger, we could go to a party whether it's at a family member's house or a friend's house, and we'd always get that that lecture before we go in, right? I don't know if it's happened with you, but I was I remember going to places and we'd be at the car, my parents would park, and they'd give us that lecture. We do that too with our kids. <laughs> I, I think we picked it up from my parents because I grew well, up always hearing that lecture. Well, Make it's sure a lecture, you guys it's like, you know, you guys know that, you know. Yeah, it's 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 that that I kind of talk. I don't, of, I don't find anything bad um, about it. It's just a reminder. Like yeah, that's what I was. We don't want say. them to 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 feel that they have to be perfect, but we want them to be able to behave as if they were in their home. Exactly. That's what I was trying to bring up. It's like let's remind them how you behave at home, and the expectation is not to change who you are just because you're at another place, or if other kids are jumping on the couch doesn't mean that you have the permission to jump on the couch. So make sure that as they're surrounded by all their friends and all that excitement and all that adrenaline, not to change kind who they of are. program something yeah. in their head, in their minds to remember you're not to act that way. Right. And so, so growing up, I've always had those lectures when I would go to places as I was younger and it felt it was that parental pressure of, you know, living up to a certain standard. My parents raise me this way. They expect me to be this way no matter where I am. I don't ever remember my parents doing that to me. Well. <laughs> I know my mom, she usually used to tell us that um, when we were young, we had this thing where we liked to, um, let me see if I could remember. We used to like digging in dirt and plants, like at home. Yeah, we did that all the time. So I know one time my sister got spanked like on her hands. And until then, she she still remembers that. And she's never done it again. But 
I think my mom taught us that we weren't to touch things. We weren't to ask things uh, like we were to ask things politely. But I think aside from that, that was pretty much it. I think that's a lot of like, you know, uh, trying to raise up a child or uh, kind of develop discipline in, in the life of the child. And to the parents, it's viewed as I'm disciplining or I'm, I'm building, I'm helping, assisting to build their character, right? But to the child or to the younger person, it views as though it's a pressure put on me that it's hard to navigate. It's hard to understand how to cope with all of this, right? So I want, I want us to go through this pressure because well, as parents, we've experienced the both sides now yeah we've we've grown up at least i have i know i have with my parents but not just with my parents but also with uh siblings with friends with even uh strangers that are within the same age group i mean other other classmates and stuff that I'm, i wasn't too familiar with but there was there was pressure there there was always some form of pressure growing up so I want us to kind of go through that in, in that aspect because now that we're pre- parents, what we really want to be able to do is as we're raising our kids, we don't want to dictate to them. We don't want to control them, but we want to be able to reach out to them in a way that they're going to open up and accept us. They understand us. that. So in order for us to do that, we have to be able to put ourselves in their shoes. Because you got to... You gotta... You gotta admit, some kids when they get together, they get excited, and we kind of always have to remind them. But there is kids that they completely go wild, and that's and we, expected. We have it's, experienced that, and yeah. these parents are really good when it comes to you know parenting. But then when their kids go somewhere, it's it like, seems like they're just disconnecting. It's like this is my time to relax. I don't understand my that. Like I just I get annoyed. Is that normal? Well, it's kind of frustrating to see when you're trying to do as as best as you can to raise a child in this world that's crazy. And you know that everything is going to impact them for good or for bad. So if you're in an environment where you see someone that's just like, you know, they, they let their guard down, you notice a shift all of a sudden. So it kind of drew our attention that it doesn't matter where we are, what the circumstance or where the the place may be, we can't put ourselves in a position as parents to let our guard down when no. it comes to our kids. But I see a lot of parents do. They just kind of like lay back, they're relaxed, and their kids are just going ballistic. But that's why I want to talk about pressure because uh, we want to be able to put ourselves in the kids' shoes. Because we don't just want to force them into certain things, but do it in a way that they're going to be receptive of what we're trying to teach them and understand that it's coming from a a heart of love to the kids. So that as we're doing that, like that five minute talk with them before we enter into someone's house of, okay, here's, here's a reminder of how we live. Here's a reminder of what our standards are. Here's a reminder of what our purpose is here to be a good example. Maybe some of the kids that you're going to interact with don't see things the same way as you, or maybe some of the kids don't understand the same things as you, or don't behave the same way as you. That does not mean that now we're supposed to change who we are because of where we're at. We're coming here, and if you notice something that's not the way you were raised in, like that we don't agree with, then you be an example. Yeah. You call it out. You say, listen, why don't we do this instead of that? Or I don't think this is something good for us to be doing jumping on the couch. Right? I can't stand that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's common, but it is what it is. But this is what we want to try and do. Uh, be an, a good influence to our kids so that they can develop those good thoughts as they're surrounded by all this pressure in their life. Those good thoughts can be absorbed in, the, in their head. So when they have to make a decision, okay, at least there's good thoughts there for them to choose. But not just that, 
um, we want to be able to put them in a position where it's not just this debating between, uh, am I going to choose between doing what my parents told me or doing what my friends are doing and I'm getting pressure on both sides. How do I choose? This is why we're, we're trying to go through this all of our good intentions good enough. All right. And we're going to get, we're going to shift a little away from our kids and the parenting aspect and kind of move into um, a more generalized sense so that everyone can take a, a lesson, I guess, from this. And it's not just a parenting lesson, but it's, it's just a generalized lesson. All right. So what I've experienced or what I've noticed growing up is that for the most part, when you're young, you get this pressure to, to grow, to become a better person, to improve on whether it's skills or to improve on character traits. But as you grow older, it seems like sometimes you still get that pressure to grow. But for the most part, you're getting pre a different type of pressure and that pressure is to digress. Now, I want us to go through some of these things with older people because we talked a little bit about children, the pressure on both sides, whether it's parental pressure or peer pressure and this, this conflict that children go through and we want to be able to put ourselves in their shoes. But I want to speak to us as adults now, as grown-ups, that go through both forms of pressure too. Have you ever heard of when, for example, you can see f literally grown people, right? And it's like they act like children. And you hear some people say, when are you going to grow up? Just because they have children does not mean that they've, they've grown up. No, and they seem like more immature than some children out there. That's the world we live in. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, when are you going to grow up? And it's almost like there's this pressure to make them grow or push them to grow because they've already passed a phase where they should, they should understand certain things. They should be living out certain ways, and yet it's like they don't. And it, it, it seems strange because it's, I wouldn't say it's out of character, but it's, it's almost like out of context for, for a certain age group to act a certain way. You're expected at, at a certain age to have a certain level of maturity, and we see a lot of adults that don't have that level of maturity. Now, I understand that, you know, everyone reaches maturity at different levels, different stages based on um, like all kinds of different dynamics in their life. Everyone can reach it at different stages. But I, th I think what we're trying to what I'm trying to get at is there's a certain age where now there's no excuse. Man up. Pretty much. <laughs> that way you're Pretty to much say. man up. Yeah. Yeah. But then we also see. So we, we have that where there's just immature adults and. A lot of them, unfortunately, have kids. And then you see the results of the children where they're super wild, super crazy, because guess what? The parents have no discipline, no structure in their own lives. So that, that kind of falls over on the kids, right? So if, if we're not going to be growing as adults, how can we ever expect our family to also to grow either? So if I'm not growing as, a, as an adult, I can't expect my children to grow either. They might grow physically. And a lot of people think that's sufficient. Yeah, they're growing. So what they grew an inch or two every year. So what if they're like six foot two at the age of 14 or 16? So what? That doesn't necessarily indicate anything apart from that they have good DNA and their genes are tall people. Yeah. That doesn't mean that they're actually growing. Now, the growing we're talking about is an internal growth. Character. growing of the mind of yeah, the character. of the character exactly yeah. so so this is what we want to be able to bring out in our lives as well as in the lives of our kids to grow but what's happening on the other side with with grown-ups and adults is that for the most part a lot of times as you're younger there's this pressure to grow and it's like we reach a certain peak of maturity and then all of a sudden, there's this pressure that's put on us to start digressing. And what do I mean about pressure to digress once you become an adult? I'll give this example. When we were younger, things were different around the world, right? Yeah. So, for example, <laughs> what was 
um, recognized as healthy food back then, if people look at it today, they're like, man, that was very unhealthy. Wow. So the standard has kind of gone up. It's yeah. increased. So what our parents back then tried to do, they did their best did of their best trying to, to raise develop yeah. us in a way that we're growing yeah. as young children. Okay. And now, now that we're adults, it's almost as though, and I, it's not to say that it's my parents or your parents, but just a generalization of it all is that it's almost as, as uh, younger people grow up and they, they become adults themselves and they've developed their own families and their own children. And all of a sudden now they want to start to implement certain guidelines in their own homes. They're going to start off by picking up what they've learned when they were younger. So what my parents did, that's, that's my basis foundation. That's what I understand. That's what I know. So that's what I'm going to start doing. But it's like, we don't stop there because we realize that that worked for me when I was younger, because that was the, the highest standard that was understood at the time. But times change. Yeah. We're living in different times. Exactly. Circumstances change. Things change. Things improve. Things digress. So we have to adapt to the changes, which means that what, for example, what my parents viewed as something healthy back then, and they implemented in my life. Now is not. Now, it's not necessarily not the healthiest. There's healthier not, options. Yes, yes, healthier That's what options, I'm saying. Yeah. There's healthier options. So let's say I grew up believing that, okay, my, my parents viewed eating healthy as something important. So they did their best to try and implement that in my life when I was younger. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to try and do the same. I'm going to try and implement the best form of health for my kids as they're, while they're, they're younger. So what's the best form of health? Well, I have to look at what's available at the time as that I'm a parent. The times that we're living now. So if I look at what my parents fed me and what's available now, well, I see there's healthier options now. So I'm going to go with those healthier options, right? Yeah. So here's where I'm going to start bringing up the digressing. All right, and I'm just using a uh, uh, grandparent generation as an example. It's not to knock on any older generations or anything like that, but it's just a simple example. So as I'm feeding my kids certain things, right, and I'm trying to choose the healthiest options that are available today, my parents knew when I was growing up, there was this, this thing that I really enjoyed, I really liked. Let's say it's a cracker, a certain type of cracker. And back then, it was, it was considered a healthy cracker. But today, there's even healthier options. So let's say my parents want to give my children that cracker that they knew I really liked. Yeah. Assuming that my kids are going to really like it. And you know what? They're aligning with my, my views because I'm trying to be healthy. I'm trying to teach my kids to be healthy. So they're going along with the same principles. But then I, I tell my parents, and this is just an example, not, not, not knocking on uh, grandparents or anything like that at all. Just using it as an example. Let's say I say, no, we'd rather not have our kids eat that cracker, but we have this cracker instead. This is what our kids are eating. This is the forms of, of treats that they're having. Yeah. And then they could take that as an offense. Pretty much. Yeah. They could take that as an offense and say, oh, what? Now, now you're better than us. Your parenting skills are better than ours. We weren't good enough for you. What we did for you wasn't good enough. And that's how I see a form of, pressure to digress Digress, yeah as we become adults how do we navigate through all of that especially like people our age where we're, we're not so much recently married but we've been married for enough years we have children we're starting to develop our family it's starting to grow and we've had a, a few years of experience now so we've started implementing our own methods now with our kids we've we start to push away from some of the the things we've picked up when we were younger and trying to improve on that, right? And now we're starting to see pressure from other people that either you think you're better than us, could be one phrase that they use, or what you think what we do is not good enough anymore. Or there's so much hunger out there that, you know, you it's almost like you're not thankful. Yeah, learn to appreciate what, yeah, what which, uh, appreciate what you have. Which that's not the case. It's just, I think because obviously, like you were saying, 
um, back then, you know, that's what they knew. And thing, we're living in different times. Even things that we at one point thought that were healthy for our kids, we come to find out that they're no longer healthier. Exactly. So, so basically what we're trying to get at is that as time passes on, Things keep changing. Things keep changing. The world just... And we need to learn how to adapt to the changes, but not necessarily to say that our standards are going to change because the standard hasn't changed. And this is what's difficult between the dynamic between, let's say, grandparents and parents a lot of times is that they they don't view the the standards. They view just the, the initial... Uh, thing like the cracker they're they're focused on the cracker and they're not focused on the standard which is we're trying to implement the healthiest option when you were parents when you were not when you were our parents they're always our parents but when we were little you tried to implement yeah. the healthiest standard now that we're parents we're doing the exact same as you the only difference is that um things have changed you got to also understand that you know, they're an older generation, therefore their knowledge is not obviously not as advanced as, you know, as not, time keeps Not necessarily because, you know what, I think a lot of them are picking up on the changes and they're adapting very well. I, th- I think a lot of it is um, taking things personal. True. Yeah, I could, I could see that. Because, because be, especially because of being a family, yeah. everyone takes everything personal. Right. So when, when we step out of that comfort zone, that, that feeling of taking yeah. things personal and really yeah. analyze what what's trying to be done here, we're trying to implement the exact same things. Just we're living in different times. So it might look different uh, 20 years ago as it does today. And maybe in 10 years from now, it it's going to look different than what more, me and yeah. you are doing. Absolutely. Right. So yeah. that's in terms of parenting. But we can say the same concept. We could talk about the same concept when it comes to Christianity with us as, as adults growing up in the church. For, for a lot of us, when you first enter the church, there's this massive um, emphasis on trying to assist you or help you to grow as a Christian. People are so willing to teach you things. Te- people are so willing to give you advice and, and guidance. And as you grow, they're like so proud of you. They're so impressed. And they're like, wow, he, this, he's really changed. I, I remember when he used to be this or when you used to be that and you used to do these kinds of things. And now it's like, what a transformation. And they're so like proud. But then all of a sudden, <laughs> to you, a certain extent, you really start taking God even more serious. Yeah. And you, you understand that what God desires in our life and the standard that we're living is two, off, two completely different standards. And even though they let's say people in the church have helped us to reach a certain standard. That doesn't necessarily mean that that standard that we've reached now is the standard that God expects us to reach. So now that they've given us that little push to get to a certain level, they expect us to stay at that level. Why? Because a lot of times those same people are at that level. So they'll push you to the level that they're at. And then when you're trying to really seek God and more of God, you study and you realize, okay, God's level, God's standard is much higher than this. So I want to achieve God's standard. So I'm going to start implementing what God wants in my life more and more and more. And then now that you're starting to do that, implement those changes in your life, these same people are are starting to look at you and be like, you're going a little too far with this. I think you're becoming a little extreme now. You You need to tone it down a little. Yeah extreme T- take it down a notch yeah right so so now we're starting to see how in the church in our christian walk there's this pressure to grow as you start as you're new in the faith all this kind of pressure and it's positive pressure a lot of it it's positive pressure because you're you're one type of personality and all of a sudden you're changing for the better so it's a good form of pressure but then all of a sudden as you're growing they should be uh kind of supportive and um happy that you're improving and advancing but if you advance a little too much or go a little too far all of a sudden you start experiencing in your life this pressure to digress press on the brakes put a pause on that stop you're going a little too far you're moving a little too fast slow down back it up all these different types of things and you question 
why am I to settle for this standard when God is calling me to this standard? You got to understand that there's just people that they're just stuck in their little bubble and they're comfortable with that. They're, they feel that that's enough. That's just, you know, I'm okay with it. I don't need to change my ways because I'm happy. But then you have other people that obviously want to grow even more and that's no longer good in their eyes because it's almost like, like you said, they think you're better or, you know, you're just too much. Like it's just, it just becomes a whole other, you know, way of people viewing your views or, or people seeing who, you know, who you're becoming. And it's almost like they just, I couldn't, I, I'm not saying jealous would be the right word, but it's just it's hard to explain when your walk with God becomes something more important to your life and you just want to be able to apply that and, and, and live it because I can say that I'm Christian and not apply certain things in my life opposed to when I know this is what God expects from me and I'm going to do it rather, you know, people will judge me for it. Then that's a problem for other people. But I think that if we're just so grounded in our beliefs and that if we stand for what we believe, I don't think that, you know, it should matter what people think. Because in the end, it goes back to me saying, like the last episode, we're not here to please people. We're yeah. here to please God. God should come first. It's, it's almost like taking this concept of like me and you are married, right? And I tell you or you tell me what's really going to make you happy in our marriage. Okay. And I want to try and please you because I'm married to you. So let's say, um, let's just try and find an example here. Um, let's do something very simple. Washing dishes. I, I don't want to get too personal. So washing dishes. So let's just say, you know, what would really make you happy in our marriage is, is if I wash the dishes every single time. Every day. Okay. <laughs> just using a just using that as, as an example okay so i know what's going to make you happy in our marriage you told me that it, jay if you wash the dishes every single time you're going to make me very happy okay. you're going to alleviate a lot of pressure in my life and i'm going to feel like you know we're both together in in the in life so okay i want to do that because i want to make you happy and then i have a friend who's who's been married maybe longer than me and they're like okay if you want to be happy in marriage this is what you got to do and it doesn't align up with what you said makes you happy. And then I end up doing it. Well, why am I doing it? Am I trying to make my friend happy or am I trying to make you happy? And you see how there's different standards and yeah. different levels. What's going to make my friend and his wife happy is different than what's going to make you happy and me happy. So I have to focus on the relationship that's more important to me. And that's why what you were saying, you know, it's, it's about God. Yeah. Right. So our connection with God is supposed to be the most important thing to us. So what is going to make God happy? That's what I want to implement in my life. That's a standard I want to go for in my life. Yes, there's going to be people that come into my life and are going to help me achieve that. But if if I'm going to plateau at a certain level, then what I'm doing is I'm just trying to make the church happy or trying to make other people happy. If God wants me to continue growing then I have to continue seeking what makes him happy, what pleases God. But remember that at the end of the day, people are not going to save me. No. Right? So if I do it for people, I'm not doing it for God. And then in the end, what, what's the outcome? Right? So here's what happens. A lot of times we get uh, many, many people that enter into the Christian journey, Christian experience, and they begin to walk. Be they begin the walk of Christianity, but they get burnt out or they give up or they become too intimidated. Yeah. Or they become intimidated because yeah. you know what? There's other people in the church that seem so much holier than them or appear so much holier. And they're like, well, I'm not quite there. And I feel like out of place because of, I know, I know who I am and I just look so different than them. Or, you know, the way I talk is different than them. They use like these Bible words that I don't even know what they mean or the way I dress. Yeah, so so we have these differences between I mean people have good intentions. They yeah. want to they want a connection with God. They have these good intentions of wanting the right things. But it's like they can't 
really grasp on those things. They can't really grasp those things and apply them in their life and stick with it. For sometimes they, they hold on for a period of time and then they give up. And you have a lot of people either leaving the church or changing the standard of their church because it's just too too much for them. So what do we do? We, we got to learn how to, um, let's say, uh, measure our success in the church or measure our success in home or measure our success in business. Wherever we are, we need to start changing our methods of measuring, measuring things. things. Because we're always looking to other people and we're comparing ourselves with other people. I know you have struggles with measurements. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because <laughs> you always come to me about measurements, right? Well, you're talking about when it's cooking? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I struggle with measuring when it comes to grams, ounces. Yeah. Some, I'd rather do cups. Sometimes I'm at work <laughs> and you're literally calling me in the middle of the day what is three grams in cups or how do i convert ounces to this and i'm like really i'm here working just google it or something i i don't i don't have the answer for you and you struggle with knowing how to uh convert convert measurements right okay so let's take that that application of converting measurements into real life now because instead of measuring our lives with other people's lives we want to we want to measure with the standard that God has. So how do we do that? How do we really do that? There's there's two two things that we can be doing and a lot a lot of people tend to pick up on the first one. All right? Now, when I share these two things, both of them appear as failures. All right? So I I just want you guys to stick stick out with us because they both <laughs> appear as though they're both failures. Failures? But they're not necessarily both failures. All right. The first one is we measured the gaps in between. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Let's say this is where I'm at spiritually, or this is where I'm at in my parenting, or this is where I'm at in my work life or business or whatever it is. You fill in the blank. This is where I ultimately want to be. So there's here and here. All right. And then we measure the gap, the space in between what it's going to take for me to get from here to here appears as though a lot, a lot needs yeah. to take place. So what you're saying is we should focus on the progress versus the gaps. Yeah, because when we focus on the gap, it's, a discouragement. it's discouraging. Yeah, yeah. And what happens is a lot of times in our Christian walk, we look at God's standards and we're like, well, this is just too much. I'm going to do what I, what I think I can and that's sufficient. And we, we plateau. And then the, so many people in the church do that, that it becomes a norm. And then all of a sudden, people come into the church and they believe that's the standard of God when it's not. All, all they've experienced was the measurement of people living by the gap, measuring the gap. That this distance of, it's just too, too, too hard to reach what God wants me to reach. So I'm just going to stay where I am, where I'm comfortable and stick with that. And then new people come in and they're like, okay, so this is a standard. This isn't very hard. And then we have this, this church that's so influenced by people's standards versus, versus God's, God's standards. standards so when someone comes and tries to live according to God's standards now we're getting they this pressure to digress while they stand out or they stand out right. yeah so instead of doing that like you're mentioning let's let's measure the progress Focus because on the progress when you measure the gap it feels like you're never going to make it yeah and in reality you're never going to make it because you're just going to stay where you are where you are where you're comfortable you don't want to change you don't like change you don't feel comfortable with with that changing, right? So let's let's instead of doing that, let's measure the progress in our lives. All right? And what does that mean? The progress means this is where I'm at, this is where I want to go. It still looks very far. But instead of focusing on the distance, let's focus on the little steps that I'm doing. All right? I look at the goal, I'm aware of the goal, the final outcome, but I'm, instead of just always focusing on the final outcome, let me, let me focus a little more on the little steps that I'm going through. One what, day at a time. One day at a time, yes. Yeah. You know, one year I, we grew in our health. Another year we grew in our understanding of scriptures. Another year we grew in our um, modesty. And each year, or it could be each year, or it could be each week or each month, whatever it is, as long as we're, we're looking at the growth and we see progress, okay, it still looks like you're never achieving. 
All right, both of them look like you're never going to reach the end result. Because progress means that you're going to keep advancing. But as you're advancing, that means God is going to say, okay, you're, you're making steps. That means you're ready to learn new things. So he, as you're going, God is taking you along a journey. And it's like that advancement. It's like you never feel like you're achieving because he's opening new experiences to you. He's opening new understandings to you. So his, his, his level for you is growing too because God isn't going to just throw everything at you at once. It's like that uh, memory verse. I don't remember uh, when God will trust you with little things. Um, Do you remember that? Verse? I don't remember the full verse, but, but it's something yeah, like it's, that. You know, God is going to give us little things, and if we can be trusted with those little yes. things, then He's going to add gonna more us, to it. Yes. It's the same thing with our the information spiritually, or or whatever whatever you want to apply to it. God is going to just introduce things a little at a time Le yeah he's not just going to throw everything all at once so as we're progressing he's going to introduce more things so it's almost like this is what's happening i'm going i'm going i'm going and it feels like i'm never achieving because god is always introducing new things to me i'm always learning when i'm with god but if you if you're focusing on the progress what happens is i'm no longer here because i'm focusing on the progress i'm actually here so there's actual changes taking place in my life. Or you... Versus with a gap, I'm here and the, the goal is here and I always stay stuck here. Or you could think of, uh, of, of a way of saying, I, I can look back and I can remember I used to do that and now I no longer do that. So yeah. when you progress into a better being, right? It just, you look back and you realize like you have progressed. You see how God you has see, led you. And it's such a beautiful journey because... Yeah, yeah because you start, you start reflecting on... On things that you once thought were... Important or... or well, yeah. Fun that, or yeah. whatever and now you, you realize that that wasn't something that, you know, I should have done or I should have... Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. And it's just, I, I personally think that it's a beautiful thing. And at the end of the day, people don't really see that as like something they should uh, uh, praise you for it's like like you were saying oh now you're too much or now you're just becoming an extremist i think that at the end of the day it's just people do envy it's the world we live in people are happy when you're miserable so why is that and that's sad why is that i think the reason for that is because people live with this thought or this idea that i have good intentions God knows my heart. Yes, I hear that all the time. We're safe. We're, what was that quote again? I think I wrote I'm, it down. We're under the law, not yes, under grace. Yes, we're that, under grace, not under I the law. I hear that all the time. So it's like, it's almost like they're... They're stuck at that level. Stuck so at that level. Not, no, not just stuck at that level, but they're, they're creating these excuses. It's sufficient. To, it's sufficient for to them. To stay where they are. Yeah, because yeah. they're just so comfortable living the lifestyle that which, they live. Which is fine. It's fine because we're not here to criticize people, but don't criticize those that want to, you know, advance advance in their life. Be happy for them. Like at the end of the day, you're not happy. If you have to pretend you're happy, just pretend you're happy, right? Well, I wouldn't recommend it because <laughs> well, you know what? We really want to be true we to who do. we are yes. and to who God is. We do, but be. when we know that there's people like that, we have to take it that way because we're just not going to take things personal. Okay, so let's really break this this question down. Are good are our good intentions good enough? Because there's a lot of people that say, "Okay, God knows my heart. He knows I have good intentions. I want I want to be able to do this, but I just don't have the strength. I just don't feel the motivation or whatever it is." And you know, you hear a lot of people say, and actually we got caught we caught each other this week talking about it. You know, remember that phrase? It's just, it's just one it's of just those one days. one of those days? Well, and but... Pe people use that all the time as like excuses. For like it's just one of... I, I, don't, I don't feel motivated to pick up my Bible. I don't feel motivated to pray. There's this and this. There's so many things that are just interfering with what I desired to do. Like I, I want to be able to wake up early and study the Bible. I want to be able to raise my kids in, in a godly way. I want to be able to spend more time with my family. I want to be a good influence around other people. But today, it's just one things of just, those I woke days. up and everything <laughs> went wrong. I had this whole thing planned out and everything just went wrong. And it's just one of those days. And we create this excuse. 
Just because it's one of those days does not mean that those good intentions fly out the window. Like, what, what is it that we did this week when we caught each other saying this same exact phrase? How well, do we for, break out of, of that? First of all, you went to work. Mm-hmm. Okay. And all of a sudden, I get up and we call each other every morning. And he's like, oh, I'm going back home. I'm like, why? And then obviously, you know, because it was raining. And the day just felt so blah because the weather it's and just it's one just of one of days. those days. <laughs> yeah. So he came home, right? And then he was in his work clothes and I was just, I was actually trying to upload our one of our, our last podcasts yeah. and it was just taking forever and I was starting to get annoyed and the weather wasn't helping. The, the problem is that you wake up and you have a routine. Yes, yes. Right? I wake up, I have a routine. Okay, but I'm not done. <laughs> but we have these expectations. But then you came home and, and then what did it do? you started to even get me more annoyed because you were just <laughs> mo- moping around because it was just one yeah. of those days. It's just, it, you know, it catches us. It catches it, it everyone. It does. And but everyone... it catches us when we least expect yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's not like we're planning this out. We're preparing ourselves for these moments or these experiences. It just happens. And that's why we always say it's one of those days. And everyone understands when you say it's one of those days, they understand what you're talking about. Everything's just falling apart or everything's going wrong. But what do we do? So we turn it around to not being one of those days. So what did you do? You got changed? Well, well, for one, we realized we we actually started laughing and we're like, wow, because we were actually doing this study. We were we were kind of going through our notes and we knew this is what we were we wanted to talk about more or less and then all of a sudden it just hit us in reality in our own life and we're like wow it just caught us off guard but because we were aware of it we were able to change the turn, situation turn around. the situation around so he got dressed well well I was already dressed, but I changed. <laughs> you changed into not work clothes, so I you weren't feeling that work mood. <laughs> home clothes, so that now that I'm at home, I'm not with that work mood at, at home yes, and then yes. feeling like, okay, I can't accomplish anything because I'm in my work clothes. So in order to accomplish something, I need to do my work, but I can't yes. do my work here. So let me change into home clothes, something Which more can comfortable. Which can help me wash the dishes. Because now I f- <laughs> right? it's like I'm programming my head that, okay, today is a, a home day. So I'm going to accomplish things that I plan out at home. At home. Yes, yes. And then all of a sudden we were successful. Yeah. It's like everything just turned around. I think it's just, just all in your mind. So what I mindset, see the difference right? in that is, you know, there's people that live with this idea of good intentions and thinking that that's good enough to live your life. I have good intentions. God knows. Or my family understands. I have to provide. I can't spend enough time with my family. They understand. And we always have these good intentions. And then everything falls apart and it always feels like just one of those days. Or I'm going to go on the diet and then I never end up going yeah, on the Yeah, New diet. Year's resolutions, another yeah, one of those that's things. A, so yeah, yeah. so many New different Year's, areas yeah. we can implement these good intentions. So how do we break out of this? Because obviously it's not good enough. I don't want to live like every day it's one of those days. I mean, if no. we get it like every so often, okay. But just the thought of people living like that every day but is even very every miserable. so often we don't want it to extend throughout the day it's, we want to be able to pick up on it and break it break mis- it out of our our cycle so how miserable. do we do it it's miserable instead of uh having good intentions what we actually need to do is live intentionally yeah it almost sounds the same because you're using similar words but they're actually two completely different things Living intentionally means that I I came home and I changed my clothes. I was so you had the intention deliberately to help me. (laughs) I was deliberately doing something to change the circumstances. Versus, right? I was deliberately taking action. Okay, versus versus just sitting there and just accepting. Yeah. The the reality of okay, I'm not working today, so I guess that just means I get to sit on the couch and do nothing and feel like I accomplished nothing today. And then at the end of the day, I feel miserable because I sat on the couch all day and accomplished nothing. And I had planned to accomplish something because I was going to go to work and feel accomplished. So that's good intentions. You, you're, you're not growing. You're not, you're not achieving anything. Yeah. But when you choose to live intentionally, that's totally different because you're taking action. Even though circumstances around you change, you adapt to those circumstances and you implement something that's going to help you to... To continue improving, to continue it's, growing. It's almost like that thought, 
you know, you're trying to work so hard towards something, rather it be a diet, rather it be, you know, something that you need to achieve. I think that mentality of thinking, okay, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Right? So I think we could put that in perspective for people to to understand, okay, I'm, I, I may, may not be able to do this, but I know I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it because I know that I'm going to progress and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, it's, it's like, so let's take this week. I didn't go to work, but I saw, okay, my whole day wasn't wasted. I got home. I still had almost the entire day of being able to do something. So why don't I just change my clothes and do what I can at home? And then at least I feel somewhat accomplished. Accomplished, yeah. So I was looking at the progress. I was able to accomplish a couple of things. So how do we live intentionally in, in different areas? For example, marriage. How can we live intentionally? Like let's, let's take you and me, for example. We want success in our marriage. So in order to live intentionally instead of having good intentions, good intentions means I want a happy marriage. I want us to thrive in our marriage. But that's as far as it goes. I don't, I'm not proactive in it. How can I be proactive? When we were dating, we used to go for walks all the time and hold hands. We still do. So we, we used to, I used to always call you yeah. on my lunch break. You still do. <laughs> there you go. That's living intentionally. Yes, yes. Even though the circumstance changed, we're no longer courting or dating. Now we're married. It doesn't mean that I need to change. Or I because, can adapt to marriage. Yeah. Now let me implement the good things, the positive things that we had. I'm going to continue calling you because that's, that's something that's good for our, our, our relationship. I'm going to continue going out for walks with you and holding your hand. Why not? That's growing our marriage, growing our relationship. So that's being intentional. That's deliberately doing something, not just the fact that, okay, now I, I, I won you in my life. Now I don't have to do anything anymore. Well, you did stop opening the door for me. Just FYI. Okay, that's... <laughs> fine okay I saw, but, but there's a reason for that because i had to start opening the door for the children and then okay. all of a sudden you just started going into the car yourself <laughs> so there's there's reasons to that but it doesn't mean that i'm we're not being intentional in our life i know i still love you right but what that actually means is that if we want to live intentionally that means that we have to give up this idea that it's my way or the highway yeah why well, that would be just selfish it'd be selfish right so imagine in our spiritual life if i want to live intentionally for god and i want to i want to grow and i don't want to get to the point where i either digress because of pressure coming into my life or i don't want to feel burnt out or intimidated or give up or whatever it is i want to be intentional in my walk with god i want to grow to the point that god wants me to be at i want to be able to be a true christian i want to be able to show him in everything i want to be in heaven i want to be in heaven exactly i want to be with jesus so i need to live intentionally which means my way or the highway doesn't Does not, cut it yeah well because that means that my way is not god's, god's way. way is here my yeah. way is here i'm gonna see the gap well god is asking too much and i'm not comfortable with change yeah i don't like to change i don't want to have to do these do these different things in my life so it's my way i'm gonna do it my way and then all of a sudden the church's standard becomes my standard or my standard becomes the church's standard. And then you people follow along the same path and then God is left, left aside and then no one knows anymore what God's standard is. So we need to be willing to let go of self, self. right? <laughs> let go of my, <laughs> yeah, we said it at the same time, jinx, right? Yeah. But how do we do that? There's a verse in the Bible. I actually want you to read it because we're getting close to the end. I want you to read it and we're going to kind of wrap the thoughts up on that, this verse. It's Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Because when we look at the Bible, Daniel is like a, a really good example of, I mean, the Bible says he was perfect. Okay, so Daniel. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Uh, hold on. Chapter so if, if we're not looking eight. to Jesus Obviously, we should be looking to Jesus. But if we want to look at anyone else and follow in their footsteps, Daniel, Daniel is a great example of what we should be doing, uh, how we should live intentionally. 1 verse 8, what does okay, it say there? Okay, so it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince that he might not defile himself. So here's what, where I want to get to. And basically, 
it's one word that I want to zoom in on and focus on, and that word is purposed. The Bible says that Daniel purposed in his heart. That purposing is just the Bible's version or the Bible's wording of living intentional. He took deliberate action. He was purposeful. He, he understood that things were different. Circumstances were different. The yeah. atmosphere was different. But that didn't mean that he was going to change. He was going to continue progressing in the standard of God. He knew what God wanted. So he wasn't going to digress because there was pressure that telling him, this is what we eat, so you got to eat what we eat. No, he had God's standard to look towards. So he was living intentionally. He was like, I'm not going to change God's standard. I'm going to continue advancing in what God is calling me to advance. So let me be intentional. Let me suggest, how about you guys give me this instead and I'll eat this and then we can compare so he kind of different he kind of turned the situation. He turned it around. He flipped it yeah. around. He was living intentional. He was taking deliberate action. Yeah. Just like me, when I got home, I changed my clothes, took deliberate action to to be able to progress during the day. So what does that purposing in your heart do? Or how does this look? Um, remember we our our last episode we were talking about building the foundation of parenting, right? And um, when you're building a foundation, now I'm not necessarily talking about parenting here now, but let's just go back to the concept of building a foundation. When you build a foundation, what happens is you could lay all the blocks there, right? And we want to grow spiritually. We want to build a, a home that's representing Christ properly. We want to build a home that's going to show him in everything that we do. So we have to build that foundation in our home. So as we're building the building blocks, what's going to happen is we're going to put that cement in between the blocks. And if we just let it sit there and then five minutes, five minutes later, someone comes and tries to knock it over, it'll fall it over. It will fall, yes. Because that cement hasn't, hasn't hardened. Yes, yes. It hasn't settled. Settled, yeah. Right? So what needs to take place in our Christian walk? This living intentionally is basically a settling of the foundation. The Bible says that Daniel purpose in his heart. He let... The, the standards of God settled in his life so that he wasn't moved. No matter what the circumstance or situation was, he wasn't moved. He didn't let things change his belief system or the lifestyle that we, he was living. But he also had a really close walk with God. So that has a lot That's to do. That's the only way he was able that to was do it. That's the only way, he, yeah. So when we go back to the beginning of what we were talking about, for example, with our kids, we, we would go to someone's house and we'd have that five-minute talk with them. This is who we are. Let's remember that. This is what we believe. This is what we stand for. This is how we behave in other people's houses. This is how we behave in our home. What is that doing? That's settling our children in the foundation that we laid at home. So that when they go out into the public, now that foundation is settled, it's not going to be moved. So when other kids are acting up, or if other kids are jumping on the couch, our kids are not going to be doing the same. Because now they're settled. They've yeah. purposed in their own hearts to live according to the standard that was laid out before them. But I also think that it's very important to parents that, you know, when we have that five minute talk with our kids, you know, on our way home, we kind of, you know, I won't say like praise them. I would say, you know, let them know, you know, we are happy. If, you know, they behave well, let them, let know, them, we're, we're let them aware. know that we're aware that, you know, I'm we, so we proud noticed. of you for you doing this. Yes, yeah, exactly. We noticed. We, we are, if we're able to do that, I think that's a really good parenting tip that we've, that, and you that, know that what? has helped us. That, that, that doesn't just fall on parenting because we all enjoy or we all like when we get that recognition. I, I don't know how it plays out. I don't know how to explain it, but we all sense when God uh shows his recognition on things that we do good yeah we get that sense from the holy spirit it's like that we we, we, we feel, feel a peace that, we feel, yeah there you go that's what it yeah, is we it's feel we a feel peace. a peace so we know that god noticed that changes are taking place in our lives we've been struggling in one sense and all of a sudden you know we're overcoming or we're progressing or you know he's seeing our deliberate action he's seeing our our efforts. Our efforts, even though other people, again, other people might not, might not, you know, obviously they do see it, but they're obviously not. The reaction is going to be different. Different. It might be we different. We still have that piece where it's like that. It doesn't bother me, and I think that in order for us to get to that level, it, it all falls in with 
our walk and our time that we spend with God because once it would bother me if people would think that way. And now it's like, it really doesn't bother me. Because God is becoming the number one yeah, in our life. It's just such it's, a beautiful just like, feeling, like I was telling you. Yeah, so like when, going back to our kids, other kids might laugh at them because they're not doing the same things or they're not, they don't, they feel like, okay, we're not going to do this. And they feel left out maybe sometimes. But then when they, when we're on the journey home and we, we encourage them because of that, then all of a sudden you see the smile on they, their face. It's like our, uh, uh, I didn't do this because I know that, you know, no, it's whatever like, it's it may like be. Or our opinions yes. are so much more valuable yeah, to them than, than the yeah. other kids even though the other kids are might be their best friends or whatever but because they understand that we love them more than their friends i think also has to do with respecting their parents too yeah right? but but it's just to show that the appreciation that they have yeah and the value they have of of how we um show our ways of being show that our approval our, of the way yeah, they were yeah. our approval of it it's, it goes the same thing with God. When we place God as number one in our lives and we get his approval with that peace inside of our lives that we're doing the right thing, no even ma- though other people yeah, no might matter, laugh, no matter even what, though yeah. other people might criticize or try and pressure us to change or to stop doing certain things, because God is number one and because God has given us that stamp of approval that we have that peace, it's like the other opinions just no longer matter. I'm happy that the one I love the most yeah. is happy. I'm making him happy. But I think also, you know, during this journey that, you know, when we obviously progress towards, you know, God's level, we understand that we might lose friends. We yeah. might lose communication with people that we once, you know, we hung around with, we, we socialize with, because obviously if that happens, then we know that, at the end of the day, maybe that wasn't such a good, you know, friendship we had because either they stopped talking to us or they no longer respect our views or, you know, things like that, right? Yeah. We've experienced that. But when we come to realize that, okay, it's okay. Like, it's okay because once again, we feel that peace inside of us that we know that it's for God that we live for and not for others. You know, there's something in my Bible that I actually wrote out. I want to read it. Um, it's it's my wording. It helps me to stay connected to God personally. Every, I don't read it all the time, but every so often when I feel like that, that pressure um, from other people that maybe you're going too far or Are you're questioning yourself yeah that that question am i really doing the right thing god am i really what i'm doing is that really pleasing you i kind of go back to this quote because it kind of reminds me why i'm doing this walk why i'm why i'm i don't know in a relationship with god so it's in the front that. of my bible you never share that with me right so so this is what i wrote here and it's it's my own words i basically wrote this this is you know you guys are entering into my personal thoughts now so it says this find out what god wants you to do and do it and then find out what makes the devil angry do it and do it because in my view that's the summary of the whole bible the summary of the whole bible is to try for me to try and live a relationship with god where i'm pleasing him i have i have love for him because he first loved me so if i love him and he loves me i want to do something or everything that's pleasing to him and i want no ties or no connection with the, the the enemy with the devil so i'm going to do everything possible that's displeasing to the devil so i need to know the two differences what does god want me to do and be intentional not just have a good okay i know and that's an, that's not enough now i have to go out and actually do it take action this is what god wants from my life so this is what i'm going to do and then i know this is what the devil wants so I'm going to turn away from these things because I don't want to please him. I don't want to make him happy. And that's the difference between having good intentions versus versus being intentional. So concluding this all, which one do you think is, is better? Having good intentions or being intentional? You tell me. I would say being intentional. Being intentional. <laughs> so I want to encourage you all to 
take this lesson and try and apply it in your lives. Instead of just having good intentions and settling there, try to live out a life where you become or be more intentional and you're going to see the blessings that God has for you. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this, share it with your friends. Once again, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Push the like button and spread the word around so that others can also live intentionally as well and be able to grow in Christ. you have any closing thoughts? Until next time, God bless. It's time to shine. Take care.